make terrifying impeachment announcement. Washington has a peculiar feel to it lately. With Democrats chanting impeach since before Trump took office it is strange to hear Republicans speak softly about it now. There is a possibility of the impeachment of President Donald Trump now that former FBI Director James Comey has stated he wrote a memo after speaking with him. Reports have said Comey has a memo containing information about Trump pressuring Comey to abruptly end the investigation into former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. Rep. Justin Amash, R. Michigan, spoke out about the situation just one day after the New York Times broke the news. Amash said if the reports about that particular incident were true then it is possible that an impeachment could occur. In a shocking turnabout however, Amash stated that he has more confidence in Director Comey than he does in his own president. Rep. Walter Jones, RN.C, also spoke with The Hill and agreed that the Comey memo could result in an impeachment. I don't know at this point, Jones said when asked if the reports of the memo were true. He added, I think legal scholars will probably start giving the justification of whether the House should or should not move forward on impeachment. Rep. Carlos Corbello, R. Flay, compared the current situation with ones from the past with Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton when speaking to CNN's Don Lemon. Corbello said, Obstruction of justice in the case of Nixon, in the case of Clinton in the late 90s, has been considered an impeachable offense. Corbello wants the Congress to demand all of the information Comey has about the conversation with Trump. He states that he doesn't think the country should get all worked up if it's nothing. Let Congress do its job. Amash and Corbello have taken any and every opportunity to criticize our president, in fact neither voted for Trump. It's a sad state of affairs when you can't even count on your own party to stand behind you. Briefings at the White House have already refuted Comey's memo, stating the conversation with the former FBI director and Trump was misstated. The Trump administration views this as just another attack by liberals. Now we know who we can trust in Congress as well. MSNBC reporters' questions cause embarrassing meltdown by Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters is outraged that President Trump fired James Comey as director of the FBI. Maxine Waters would absolutely support Hillary Clinton firing James Comey as director of the FBI if she had become president. Got it, Maxine. In a strange televised video with the anti-Trump firebrand representative from California, MSNBC's Peter Alexander queried Waters in an attempt to get a coherent, cogent explanation as to why Representative Waters is so angry that President Trump fired Comey the man she had angrily denounced as having no credibility when he headed the FBI. Alexander probed Waters on her opinion of the president's firing of Comey. Alexander, you obviously have been very critical of James Comey in the past. You said that he had no credibility. I assume you support the president's decision then to fire his FBI director. Waters, no, I do not necessarily support the president's decision. If the president had not gone all over the country praising him about the way he handled Hillary and the emails, if the president had not said he had confidence in him, if the president had not said he was a part of his team. Alexander, but Congresswoman, I understand in the past he was praising him. But if you said that FBI Director James Comey had no credibility, wouldn't you support the fact that the president, then candidate Trump, now President Trump, made the decision to get rid of him? Waters, no, not necessarily. Alexander gave Waters the opportunity to better explain her seemingly contradictory position, and she reasoning quickly unraveled, Alexander, so, Congresswoman, respecting that be to be clear, you believe it would have been better to keep in place an FBI director who you said had no credibility to oversee this investigation than to find someone who you think would be a better choice? Waters. No. But I believe the president thought that. Don't forget. You're talking about what some Democrats said, what I said, but don't forget. He was the president. The president supported him. He had confidence in him. It was within his power. Alexander, but you said he had no credibility so it would make sense that he get rid of him. Waters, no, no, no. Under investigation. 
this president basically has interfered with an investigation where he may be implicated. That's outrageous. And that's why we're having so much of a conversation about it today. Everybody is talking about it because this is highly unusual. Alexander, the bottom line is you think an FBI director without credibility would have been best served in this position to try to pursue this investigation. Waters, I think that if the president would have fired him when he first came in, he would not have to be in a position now where he is trying to make up a story about why. It does not meet the smell test. Notice how Waters evades Alexander's direct and simple question? Then the final bit of head spinning double talk by Waters in an attempt to rationalize her own contradictions, Alexander, understood. So if Hillary Clinton had won the White House, would you have recommended that she fire FBI Director James Comey? Waters, well, let me tell you something. If she had won the White House, I believe that given what he did to her, and what he tried to do, she should have fired him. Yes. Alexander. So she should have fired him but had he shouldn't fire him. This is why I'm confused. Waters, no, you're not confused. If the president is implicated in an investigation. Alexander, I am confused. Watching Maxine Waters try to sensibly argue to contradictory positions at once was either hysterical or cringeworthy, depending if you lean right or left. Peter Alexander seemed to find the interview hilarious as well as he barely contained an amused expression throughout. When James Comey announced in July 2016 that the FBI would not advocate for charges against Hillary Clinton for her role in her private server scandal, Democrats opined that Comey was a straight-shooting, unbiased man. Then, following the announcement of the reopening of the Hillary server case in the fall, he was a partisan villain. Comey must go. Now, Trump has acted outrageously for firing Comey. What's going on? The Democrats can't seem to decide on a narrative. O'Reilly lands a new gig, you'll be surprised where. Bill O'Reilly is back. O'Reilly will join Glenn Beck's radio talk show every Friday. The much-missed Fox News host said he will be on the radio show until Beck gets tired of me. On the No Spin News podcast The O'Reilly Hosts, he announced the good news. O'Reilly is excited about this venture stating, It's a good outlet for me to, you know, discuss things back and forth with Beck, who's a good friend. We don't agree on everything, but it's lively. Beck and O'Reilly have been friends since they were both Fox rating powerhouses. And, like O'Reilly, Beck was let go from his Fox show even though his ratings were through the roof. They have supported each other through their controversies, Beck most recently stating on his radio show that the charges against O'Reilly were false and calculated. Beck states, he had access, at Fox News, to very beautiful women. We never saw him utter a word that was even blue humor. He was so buttoned up when he was around us, I find these charges hard to believe. Beck urged his listeners to Google an article about nine, big corporations the leftist groups funded by George Soros, are targeting. The corporations are supposedly somehow profiting from the president's strong immigration stance. That will give you a roadmap, Beck said. Beck has been urging O'Reilly to join him in many ventures for years, and is excited about O'Reilly joining him now. The liberal force can't quiet O'Reilly. The truth will be Please read. Steve Bannon just sent email message to President Trump that will save America. The Republican National Committee sent out a fundraising email asking for assistance on President Donald Trump's drain the swamp agenda. The email notes the ongoing battle against a hostile press while offering words of wisdom from a top Trump advisor, Steve Bannon. You already knew the media is out to get us, the email said. But sadly it's not just the fake news. There are people within our own unelected bureaucracy that want to sabotage President Trump and our entire America First movement. Steve Bannon was right when he said, if you think they're going to give you your country back without a fight, you're sadly mistaken. Every day is going to be a fight, Bannon said. That is the promise of Donald Trump. The email points out that the people opposed to Trump and his policies do not want to put America first. 
they want it to be special interests first to enrich themselves all while the citizens of our country remain an afterthought, the email said. We have no choice but to completely drain the swamp, the email said, noting that Trump is already started cleaning house. The email concludes, but every day will be an uphill battle and we need to be prepared to go into the trenches to fight back. Report something chilling about to happen in Trump's White House Insiders have leaked that Trump is about to purge many White House advisors in his close circle, the purge will begin today. Many of Trump's supporters will find the purge chilling, as the president has been under the influence of Jared Kushner and his wife Ivanka. They have pressured the president to get rid of some of his top advisors who align with his populist base, in favor of a more centrist group of higher-ups. Steve Bannon is said to be on the chopping block. Getting rid of Bannon would infuriate Trump's base but would surely make Ivanka and Jared pleased. It would also signify a shift towards more centrist policies, and away from the policies that Trump vowed to put in place while he was on the campaign trail. Also at risk, Trump's press secretary. Speculation continues to swirl around White House Press Secretary Sean Spicer, who has hindered Trump with a series of high-profile gaffes. As InfoWars reported first, before the rest of the mainstream media followed suit, Trump is seriously considering replacing Spicer with Fox News host Kimberly Guilfoyle. In an eyebrow-raising move, Guilfoyle liked one of InfoWars' tweets, in which they linked to a story about the fact that Trump was considering her for the post. Alongside the comment, I had this story two days ago, lazy MSM late again. Former Trump adviser Roger Stone said the establishment made the mistake of hitting Trump too hard, despite the fact that Trump attempted to extend an olive branch during the early months of his presidency. Now he understands, the gloves will be off, this is a fight to the finish, I can't tell you this, don't ever push Donald Trump into a corner, he is a fighter, said Stone.